Good. Thank you very much for coming in spite of the weather. Uh, you, you guys are the courageous ones. Um, so, uh, yeah, tonight, um, the AGM. Um, welcome. Can someone tell me what time it is exactly? Quarter past six. Okay, I declare the AGM officially open. Um, are there any apologies other than those noted on Meetup and Adam Fitzgerald? Sam Bishop, welcome. No other apologies? Ah, oh, now, would someone like to record the minutes for me? That would be a good thing. Helen Burgess is an apology, thank you. Can I have a volunteer to do some minute taking? Thanks very much, Russell. Yeah, I will need to do that. Um, so I can confirm that there are sufficient people here to uh, constitute a quorum. Uh, so we're okay to proceed. Only one proxy has been received uh, from Helen Burgess in favour of Brendan Underwood. Um, minutes of the previous meeting have been circulated. Um, are there any matters arising from those minutes? None. Okay, good. So I'd like to move that those minutes be accepted. Can I have uh, someone second that, please? Chris Bauer has seconded that. Um, so uh, those minutes I declare to be passed. Um, I'm going to do a uh, chairman's report. Um, then we're going to have a, a quick look at the um, financials. Um, and uh, then we're going to uh, announce the uh, committee election results. And, uh, and there'll be a very quick uh, review of strategy. All up, I think that's only going to take about 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, and then we'll have a short break. And then Senator Ludlam will be with us from about 7 or 7.15. So let me get started. Uh, as uh, Patrick said, we'd like to acknowledge our sponsors, Ninefold and Fast Hip. Just a very, very quick kind of assessment of, of where we're up to at the moment. We uh, have quite a bit of momentum at the moment. Um, we have largely delivered the strategy that we put in place last year. And um, so that's all good. Uh, we, as a volunteer organisation, continue to you know, struggle with, uh, you know, with, with managing an organisation as a volunteer um, enterprise. And, and really, my assessment about that is that over a period of the next couple of years, we need to transition to something which is not entirely volunteer-based, with some kind of professional secretariat. Uh, and, uh, and I note that uh, AGDA have just done a similar thing uh, in recognition of the difficulties of, of being a sustainable and financially solid organisation um, but particularly just managing the, the, the human resources side of it. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's where we are and that's, and that's where we're headed. Uh, we need to be um, financially stable and we need to be stable from an organisational viewpoint and we should be moving towards a corporate structure. There are some implications of that and I'll cover those as, uh, as I go through the talk today. So this is our committee as it stands at the moment. Um, my vice chairman, Joe Manoriti, is at nine o'clock. Um, Nick Crowther, uh, going clockwise from there, Nick Crowther, and then up top, Chris Bauer, who's here today. Um, Nick, I should say, well, let me start with Joe. Uh, he, he runs um, Swim Communications in Melbourne. Um, he's been very active in the committee this year and, and a, a, real, um, a real support for, for me and for the committee generally, doing great work. Um, Nick Crowther. Uh, runs Free Range Future. Nick is also the chair of the Australian Web Awards Committee. Uh, the Web Awards are open. I'll be talking about that a little bit more later as well. Um, Chris runs Fast Hit. He's been a sponsor for many years of the organisation and we appreciate his ongoing support uh, for us. Um, and he was the chairman of the Edge of the Web Committee last year. Um, Judd Exley uh, is membership officer and, uh, and I'll talk about him a little bit later, but he's been terrific for us. Uh, Adam Fitzgerald is our treasurer. He's in the middle. He's an apology for today. He's about to have a hip operation and he really wasn't feeling up to, to getting out of the house. Um, and he's uh, delivered a report um, on paper. Um, Natalie Gim has been secretary for the last few months. Uh, and uh, the bottom left is Daniel Martin, um, who is not re-standing as a committee member. Neither is Natalie. Both those people have had um, very big changes in work commitments. Um, 
Daniel's running Keep Social, which is a social marketing consultancy, and it's going gangbusters, and he really has to concentrate on that. Natalie's just taken a full-time job, and her situation's changed, so she's not renominating. Um, the rest of those people have all renominated. During the year, we lost some committee members. Uh, Helen Burgess, I'd like to specifically acknowledge. Helen uh, has run the Web Awards and been integrally involved in the, um, the management of the Web Awards for uh, a long time, and she's a real significant contributor um, to web standards and to education in Western Australia. She works at the Central Institute, uh, and, um, and we really do um, miss uh, her involvement in the Web Awards, um, but we'll, we'll plow on. But uh, thanks to Helen for a fantastic contribution to the association over many years. Um, Michelle Roberts from Westpac uh, is, um, is uh, no longer with us, but she, uh, in the sense that she's not on the committee, um, she uh, was uh, very helpful in getting Port 80 started in Sydney, and uh, and thanks to her for that, she had uh, organised a, a space for us at Lachlan Hardy's workbench. Lachlan has also been very helpful, um, and uh, and thanks to Michelle for the work she put in on that. Um, Michelle and Ricky at the bottom both came to us via Whipper. Uh, most of the people in the room would know that we merged with Whipper last year, and uh, Ricky Onsman was instrumental in that merger and uh, and. And that's you know, quite an important development in the history of this organisation. Uh, and Ricky, um, you know, work commitments, isn't able to uh, be on committee any longer, but uh, we continue to uh, talk to him and he continu continues to give us advice. Uh, so um, thanks to all those people as well. I'd like to thank Plug, the Perth Linux Users Group, uh, for streaming today and uh, for their support during the year. And there's a number of those people in the room today. Um, they're fantastic. You know, whether I go to, the, to their meetup group occasionally, and um, and you know, even if you do not uh, enjoy hacking the Linux kernel, they run a very fun meetup. It's a great place to go. Um, those guys have a lot of fun. It has its own character. It's really, really an interesting thing to do. Um, recommend you do that at some point. And um, Luke, I might get you to talk about Linux Conf a little bit in a little bit more detail later on as well if we have time. But uh, Linux Conf is next year in Perth, and um, and if you know anyone who's in the Linux community, make sure they probably know about it already, but if they don't, mention it to them, please. So I want to talk about a few of the things that we've fixed up during the year. Um, the, um, uh, communications is actually working quite smoothly at the moment. We're, we're replying to emails um, you know, in good time, and we're probably in better shape in that area than we have been uh, in the past. Uh, that is uh, almost entirely due to uh, Judd's work. He's been fantastic as a membership guy and sorting out difficulties. Um, he's really, really made a difference, and he's an extremely valuable person in this association. Thank you to him for that. Um, renewals. Um, some, some of you will have been through the arduous process of renewing your AWIA membership. We had a lot of difficulties with that. It's taken us months to get to the core of those problems. Um, who knew that something could go wrong with a website, really? Um, but uh, thanks to Chris Bauer at Fast Hit, who's nutted out uh, some of those difficulties that we had uh, from the hosting side, and to Brendan, um, some of the problems that we've had with um, the member add-on. We've, we've worked through that. And, um, you know, I renewed my membership a while ago, and I, and I just got into this, you know, dumb loop where it just kept on taking me back to the join page. You know, why, why don't people tell us when things are not working? <laughs> you know, really, the, I, I encourage you people to tell us. The website is our public face. We want it to work really well. If something's not working on the website, please let us know about it and we'll fix it. Yeah? So anyway, renewals are fixed. Thank God. Um, and um, uh, thanks to people who helped fix that up. The... Um, Directory I want to talk about a little bit as well. And Brendan and I have been working on that a bit. Um, the, um, very well groomed Brendan Underwood. Yeah, he's a serious dude. Um, so what's happened with, that, with our directory over time is that we've allowed people to say what they specialise in. And you know, most people have claimed expertise in everything. Really, that's... And that's from a user's viewpoint, that's not a very helpful thing. Really, what we should be doing 
and you guys know this, is, is coming at this from designing the directory that works best from a user's viewpoint. <coughs> we need to make the directory something that actually functions and helps them find a company that's appropriate for their needs. So we flushed the directory this year. If you haven't updated your profile, please do that because the directory is actually going to be quite useful for people in getting new work, I believe. That I'm very confident of that. So when, with the information that's going in there, and we haven't turned this on yet, but, but you'll see that there is sensible filtering in the approach that we're taking. So, you know, if you want to deal with someone who's had experience with at the enterprise level or at government level or in the education sector, you'll get to specify that now. Um, and, you know, developers won't be able to say they specialise in all of them. Um, you'll be able to say if you're looking for a business, I'm actually interested in a specialist. I want someone who is you know, an online marketing specialist um, or I want someone who's an accessibility expert. Uh, so that will allow those people who do spend all their life working on a narrow specialty to actually declare that expertise and not have to compete with the companies who say they do everything. Uh, and also we've got, the, um, we've got those specialties um, spelled out there. There's also the ability for people to say what content management system they're looking for or what software platform they're looking for uh, and to specify whether they want large or small companies. Should make a difference. Now some of the things that we actually have done during the year. Uh, we've put together a benefits package for the first time, uh, mostly through Palmier Insurance. And, and they were really great to work with because what they did was they said to us, here's what we think it should be. And we went, no, that's not appropriate. And we, we to and fro with them a fair bit. And they came to develop an understanding of what an average web business gets involved in. They then took that specification to London. They spoke to a number of brokers. They found a broker that was interested in dealing with our industry. So what we've ended up with is a completely tailored package. You're not paying in that package for anything that you don't do in your work life. Uh, and, and it specifically includes a lot of the things we, we do. So if you get into a claim situation, you can be pretty confident that that policy is going to cover you. Uh, and there's the ability for you to also customise the policy with them if you want to, if you're doing something a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, in addition to the, to, the, to the insurance package, we also now have benefits in the travel area. We have benefits in debt collection and we have benefits in getting free legal advice. Um, so, I mean, they're all good things. I hope that uh, members take advantage of those and we're going to be adding some more benefits uh, during the year. Um, it's, you know, it's sensible stuff. We're in a position of being able to package that up and offer that audience to, to people. If you know of someone who has something that they could offer the membership, happy to talk to you about that and, and, and turn that into a member benefit. Uh, W3C, we've got involved in uh, a bid to bring W3C, which is the largest academic conference on web technologies in the world, to Australia in 2017. And the association is active in groups that are putting that bid together. And we're at this stage uh, the lead city uh, for that uh, candidacy, uh, Perth I'm talking about. Um, and um, and uh, we're reasonably confident that uh, we're going to be there um, when they make that decision, which will be next year. One of the other things we've been doing is looking at our branding. And here are all the, the logos that we have for all of the, the ventures that we get involved in. You'll notice that there's not a lot of consistency between the brands there. Yeah. So one of the things we wanted to do was create a situation where if someone attends the conference or enters the Web Awards, they realise there's a visual cue that it is part of AWIA. It's part of the Web Industry Association. So we wanted to express that visually. And, uh, and I'm going to show that to you today. It's out there right now. So this is our new logo. We've, we've decided to build that imagery around the green network device uh, that we have. And we're going to start calling ourselves AWIA. It is a little bit difficult to say, but you know, it's a lot shorter than saying Australian Web Industry Association, Inc. Yeah? So when you start talking about the association, please you know, feel free to describe it as AWIA. That's who we are. We want to include that in our iconography. Um, and the other logo I want to show you that's been developed is for the Web Awards. So this year uh, we have a, a logo for the awards which leverages off the same visual um, imagery that we've got for uh, AWIA. 
uh, and the logo for port 80 uh, and wirelines is under development as well. That work has been done by Joe Manoridi's company, Swim Communications, and Mary is the person in their office that did the particular work. It was a really quite a specific and, and I think a fairly difficult brief and, and uh, we're really happy with, um, Brendan's not happy, everyone else is happy with, with the logo that we've, we've come up with um, and that's our visual identity from now on. Thanks very much to Joe and his team for that. Some of the things that we're doing that are actually working. Oh, nothing there. There are some things. We're, we're developing a relationship with Outa. Again, Joe's involved in, in Outa as a board member. Um, and one of the, th the things that we're doing with them is um, we, want, we will be inviting them to come into some port 80s and talk about reseller arrangements. But those reseller arrangements have changed and it's, it's important that particularly larger web development companies, perhaps all of them, but you know, if you're a web house and you're doing some hosting, uh, there are some important changes uh, that, are, that are coming about. Outer um, will send, uh, and we're facilitating this, will send people out to your business to talk to your team about how all of this works. So you'll be able to request uh, at no charge someone from Outer to come out and give you a, a proper brief and a rundown of how the new arrangements work. So that's, I mean, the thing with Outer is, a, you know, it's an important thing in establishing our credibility as a professional organisation, and they're, you know, they're a very good entity. Um, Patrick, I'd like to thank. One of the things that's, that's working um, is Port 80 around the country, and uh, particularly in Perth, uh, we've got a really good community here. Patrick has been very helpful in, uh, in, in putting that together. I appreciate his assistance. And we've, in, in Port 80 in Perth and, in a, and around the country, we've, we've done a lot of diverse things. You know, we've done big data, we've done WordPress stuff, we've done CSS preprocessors, we, we, did, we did personal development, we've done feminism. Like, there's a whole lot of really diverse stuff that, that we've um, taken on in, in Port 80. Um, one of the things about the Port 80 um, universe is that it's different to a lot of tech meetup groups where you go there specifically to talk about a technology and I guess when I first got involved in the web my concept of people who put together websites was people who did programming and I've come to see that our industry is not about just programmers and the interesting thing that happens is you know when you put a programmer and a designer and a marketing person together that's no longer about something technical. That's no longer about a job. That is a business. And one of, the, one of the things I've seen happen in Port 80 is that people come here and get exposed to other parts of the industry that they didn't know about and meet other people in the industry that are useful to them. It's a real growth experience because we have that diversity. It's one of the defining characteristics of Port 80 um, that we expose you to things that, that you will not get in, in your own office and you will not get in a, in a specific tech meetup group. So um, Ninefold is sponsoring Port 80 in Perth and in Sydney now, uh, Ninefold Cloud Hosting. Um, uh, I thank them for their support. Um, in Adelaide, Nick Crowther has set that up by himself, essentially, and, uh, and uh, he's now got a community there of people, you know, 20 plus people who are meeting uh, on a regular basis. They had a very successful meet up there recently where they had an international speaker talking about WebGL and uh, Nick's done a great job there um, uh, with uh, a couple of uh, helpers uh, from his company at Free Range Future. Um, uh, Adelaide is going very nicely. Um, Melbourne, um, Marty Drill has set up Melbourne and has kept it running. He's really the driver of that group. Um, Melbourne uh, has in, you know, included you know, talks about you know, from people at Facebook, from uh, Human Relations, um, LinkedIn. Um, that uh, that group needs some extra resources to pump it along, um, but it continues to operate. Um, and thanks to Marty and Joe Manoridi for keeping that group going. I want to just um, cover off uh, Brisbane because what we, although we don't run Port 80 as a separate entity in Brisbane, we have developed a relationship. It's very early stages, but it's with the Brisbane Web Design Meetup Group, and they are a very good meetup group. They run a really 
uh, a very similar kind of um, meetup in, in some ways to Port 80 in that it's very diverse. They have lots of people in. It's very educationally based uh, and, uh, and it's a big deal. runs at the, uh, the edge uh, in Brisbane and, and our undertaking to them is that we will encourage our members to go to their meetup group uh, and uh, get involved and, and there'll be some opportunities to talk about some of our activities uh, along the way. Uh, Sydney has been going for nearly a year, I guess. Uh, um, it's been a slightly bumpy ride. We've we've done some stuff that you know, uh, some stuff has worked, some stuff hasn't. Uh, it's still a little bit experimental. Lachlan's been great, as I said, at uh, Workbench. Um, we're we're in a pretty good place with that now. Um, there were some speaking highlights. There were some fabulous talks at the Sydney. I've s I s heard some of the talks in Sydney. They were great, um, and uh, so content is really good. Um, numbers need improving and there's scope for that. That's going to happen. Shane Cox in Sydney has taken on the organisation. He's from Anchor. Uh, they've come in with some sponsorship as well. And Shane is just a terrific, motivated guy. And, uh, and he's scheduled a whole lot of events that look really exciting, uh, including you know, developers and their clients. Um, it's, it's a slightly different cut at, uh, at how we do it, but we're looking to learn from that. And uh, really, really interested to see what, what happens in Sydney. Um, Michael Linzar from Reinteractive has also got interested. Um, they are a leading Ruby house in Sydney. Um, Michael is um, you know, a very um, accomplished uh, guy in the industry and, uh, and he's also kicked in some sponsorship for Port 80 in Sydney. Appreciate that and look forward to his active involvement in the association. So all of that's the things that are working now. I want to talk about the things that we've half got right because there are a few of those. We did Edge of the Web this year. Um, the conference itself, uh, I, you know, feedback was really positive about it. Uh, we had a lot of fun. The content was excellent. Um, it was a stylish event. All that stuff worked extremely well. We lost money on it, as we did last year. And, uh, and really, 100 people showing up in Perth or 120 people showing up to a conference in Perth is not enough for us to fund it. So the first job of the Edge of the Web Committee coming up in the next few weeks is to talk about the business model. How do we get that um, content out into Australia into a way that makes it a uh, financially sensible um, initiative? Uh, so there's work to do on Edge of the Web. Conference is good, but, but we need to build it. And I should in passing mention that we had very good support from people in the eastern states who came to Perth um, to, um, to share their knowledge very generously. A number of them um, probably most of them came over at no cost to us. Very much appreciate that. Uh, John Alsop also came over uh, to keynote for us at the very last minute. Grateful for him doing that. Uh, Fast hit I mentioned, um, and Chris's involvement in Edge of the Web uh, has been critical. Um, so thanks very much, Chris, for your support in that. Um, business hosting in Western Australia. You should talk to Chris. So, um, the Australian Web Awards are now open. Um, this is the flyer that um, Nick has produced out of uh, Adelaide. Um, and uh, it's open until August the 16th. Encourage you to please spread the word. That's only you know, about 10 days away. Um, you really need to tell people about the Australian Web Awards. It's a great thing if you win it. It's a really useful marketing advantage. Um, so, uh, the awards are now open. new categories, politics, social media, um, and importantly, we're running um, state finals this year. So last year we just had a national event. Um, too many prizes got won by West Australians, and so what we're doing now is we're running state finals as well. So there are many more awards. Um, if you enter and the site is of quality, then you will probably win a state award, uh, and then, um, then you'll be eligible to go to the nationals, which are in Sydney this year. Bankwest, one of our sponsors. Uh, Palmia are also sponsoring the Web Awards. Uh, Media Access Australia uh, have uh, come on board as a sponsor of the government category. Uh, Web Directions are sponsoring the innovations category and John Alsop will be judging that. And uh, an important piece of news is that uh, Web Directions uh, who run the McFarlane Prize, which is the other quality 
um, properly judged event around web standards and web excellence uh, have agreed to merge uh, the McFarlane Prize into the Australian Web Awards. So uh, we're very happy about that. Uh, they have a whole lot of experience in running awards and, um, and you know, a, a, you know, a close following. Um, so we're excited that you know, the reach of the Web Awards is going to be increased by that. And we're very pleased to be able to continue the heritage of the McFarlane Prize. Our award for the most outstanding uh, website in Australia will be called the McFarlane Prize from this year onwards. Uh, I should mention the judges. Uh, we've had uh, over 20 judges last year um, who I'm not going to run through all their names um, but thank you very much to them. It's a big contribution because they do all this behind the scenes. They don't get any acknowledgement from the from the general public really um, and um, uh, you know next time you see someone who's been a judge in the Web Awards maybe you'd, you know you could thank them for for dedicating lots of time to that, uh, it's 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 a big commitment. Some of the things that we've started and haven't finished yet, we've um, we've got a, a memorandum of understanding with the um, Australian Computer Society that's about to be um, signed. This I should say the ACS Foundation, uh, and the reason we have that is people in the industry have said to us that the um, that interns, that um, people that they take out of tertiary institutions are uh, not sufficiently um, trained in what a real organisation is all about. So there is an intern project which is run by the ACS Foundation. Uh, it's a dedicated body for that purpose. Uh, they, uh, they administer, they provide insurance, uh, they manage and, uh, and, and we can uh, work with them and make that program available to our membership and to people who want to take on board interns in a proper structured fashion um, will be participating in the ACS Foundation's intern program. Um, and we'll also be working with them to see what else we can learn about um, you know, conditions under which people can take on interns. Um, yeah, look, I want to, want to mention Widelines. For those of you who don't know about Widelines, it's our code of conduct. It's a set of guidelines for clients to take into a web development company and, and say, where do you sit on these uh, behavioural ethical issues to help them separate the good professional operators, typically people who join our association, and the people who are more on the shonky side, shall we say. Um, there are some operators out there... Um, and we're not doing the right thing, Widelines is our way of saying to the, to the market, look, there is a difference between people who work professionally and someone who says they're happy to do your website. Just today I heard, heard someone talking about someone who was supposed to have delivered a website for them in February, uh, only just delivered it today. They're not a member of our association, but they said they were, they were able to do it. Um, those situations shouldn't arise. Our, our job is to educate people so they know that there are reputable people they can deal with. Good, so some of the things that uh, we've you know, had ideas about and not done, we can't drop the ball is the expression really, um, the, we want to do a survey of members, we want to survey the industry and, and do that in detail to get valuable information, partly because we can then feed that off to government so that, so that they know where the industry shortages are because what happens with that is that they then subsidise those places at tertiary institutions and people can do those courses for less money. Right? So it's a practical thing that we're doing there in, in finding out where the, where the gaps lie in the industry. We'll get to that this year. The AWIA website, um, from a UX viewpoint, needs a lot of work. Um, we've started, there's a committee, Magnus is involved in that, um, but you know, we've really stopped and started a couple of times on that. Uh, that will be a project that we will get underway and we will turn that around and have that looking and working a lot better than it currently does.
Okay, that's, um, that's the uh, end of my report. As chairman, I will be nominating to chair again next year. Um, but I um, thank you for your support during the year. Uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, move that the chairman's board report be accepted. Thank you very much. Can I have someone to move that? Colin Daly has moved that that be accepted. And a seconder? Thank you. Brendan Underwood has seconded. So the financial report uh, will be circulated. Um, uh, it's been submitted in writing. I'm just going to show it to you very briefly. Um, Adam sends his apologies. Uh, I'm gonna, I guess I can run through it in, in, in very short form. Here we go. Okay. So, I mean, uh, what can I tell you about that? We... Um, our membership income was higher than it was last year, um, uh, partly due to the uh, the merger with WIPA. Our um, uh, loss on Edge of the Web was about the same as last year. Um, we something else there. Uh, awards ran about the same as it did last year uh, and we were lower on sponsorship, um, significantly lower this year than we were last year, hoping to turn that around in the next year. Uh, and I think the signs are good about that. Um, so that's really all I can tell you about the, uh, the finances other than to say that there are $9,000 in the bank uh, and, um, and with that I will move that the Treasury's report be accepted. Sam Bishop, and a seconder, Chris Bauer. Thank you. That's the Treasurer's report. Okay, I'm now going to ask if Peter Clemeno could, um, could come up, please. Uh, Peter's uh, the returning officer, and she's going to step you through the election results for committee. Thanks for having me along. Um, I've been asked to be the returning officer for your organisation as a non-financial member. So I'm legit. I have no vested interest. <laughs> so um, you conducted your poll over electionbuddy.com and the results were... Um, elected were Chris Bauer, Nick Crother. Sorry if I'm pronouncing any of these names wrong. Judd Exley... Adam Fitzgerald, Michael Linzar, Joe Manoriti, sorry, Joe Manoriti, Daniel Scott, Brett Treasure, Brendan Underwood, David Vu, and Damien Whitmack. Um, the other returning officer was Mary Ann Anaru. She wasn't able to be here. I think believe she's coming later. Just so there were two returning officers. <laughs> And um, is there anything else you needed me to say? Okay. Lovely. Thank you. So I declare those people um, elected to committee. And how this works is that we're not having a general, me uh, we're not having a committee meeting following the AGM. We'll get together next week, and uh, and uh, officers will be appointed next week. Okay, here's a really quick run, run through. Thanks for being patient. I'm going to run through some strategy stuff for next year. This doesn't take as long as the previous report. Um, we're, we're looking to double the number of people attending Port 80 around the country. That's not a big ask because Sydney and Melbourne are they're running at about the same numbers or even less than Perth is running at. Uh, and there's massive upside potential in those markets when word gets out about uh, what goes on. So we'll double numbers in Port 80 in the next 12 months. Wide lines, we've got some really some strong um, support on. Uh, we um, have uh, some promotional support from Google. 
uh, and we've asked them for some AdWords support as well so that uh, people searching for web developers um, you know, will find our directory easily. Um, and um, we're also pumping out information about the Code of Conduct through the business associations and the Chamber of Commerce and the Small Business Association that, uh, that I've spoken to so far, very supportive, very interested and, and want to get word out there about the code. So what's going to happen is clients are going to start arriving at a web development company and saying, are you signed up to Widelines? Um, and uh, for that reason, it's a very sensible thing for you to get into the directory. The directory for AWIA will also be the directory for Widelines. Uh, so um, there'll be two directories out there working in your favour. We'll continue working on the MOUs. I've had a really good conversation recently with the people at AGDA, the Australian Graphic Design Association. Uh, they are interested in, in supporting us with Widelines uh, and, uh, and some cooperative promotional activities as well. And, uh, and we'll work towards signing an MOU with AGDA as well. I want to put together a funding committee. Uh, uh, and I, I know that people avoid coming to an AGM because they don't want to have to volunteer for anything. But I am calling for volunteers for the funding committee and particularly looking for people who uh, have corporate connections or some experience in, uh, in sponsorship or grant applications. Um, we'll put together three or four people, uh, see if we can make a difference in that uh, area. And we'll continue developing the benefits package that we've got so that there are, you know, reasons for joining the association that people can't avoid. Um, we will be, I'm just flagging, we will be increasing membership fees for corporate members in particular uh, in the next 12 months. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. But uh, we will be increasing membership fees. Um, and, and that's so that we can resource this properly. We really, you know, you've got to have some... We're, we're, we're lacking the financial stability that we need to be able to do all the things that we want to do for members. So, sorry about that, but fees will be going up. At the moment, the situation is if you're a company, you can join our association for $150. If you're not a member, I would join up really quickly and get, get 12 months out of that because we will honour that. But the idea that you can join up uh, and have multiple people attend for $150, all of our events, doesn't make sense. Uh, it, we, we need to change that arrangement, and we will. So, finally, um, in terms of things that you as members um, can do, I'm, I'm really I'm asking you to, to be active, and, and here's my request. If you're not already a member of the association, then join the association. Lots of people come to Port 80 regularly, are in the industry, don't belong to AWIA. The right thing to do is to join up the association and, and get involved financially as well. And then, you know, you get on the mailing list and you'll find out lots of other stuff as well. Get other people to be part of our organisation. Actively take an interest in people around you who you like, who are substantial and who have the right values and get them involved in our association. We don't want to have 10,000 members in this association. We want to have 2,000 members who are the right people. And that will make us a very powerful and influential group. Really, I want two years off you bastards. I want active engagement for a couple of years. Um, you know, if you've got, if you're in a position to put some, you know, some sponsorship funds in uh, to one of the projects that we're involved in, please do that. If you're not, then please um, dedicate some time to us or put your hand up for projects. I know there are people in this room who have already done that, um, but we need to cast a net a little bit wider. Um, so if you're listening on the stream, um, please. Um, Step forward and, uh, you know, if you read something in the newsletter, and do read the newsletter, <laughs> if, you t if you do read the newsletter and there's something in there, step forward and do something for us. It'll pay back for you. Thanks very much. Um, that's all I've got for you on strategy. Um, and uh, with that, um, the time is... Five to nine? Five to seven? <laughs> it's five to nine in Sydney. And uh, with that, I declare the meeting closed at...
527. Thank you very much. We're going to do pizza on the table. Please feed your faces. And uh, then we'll be back in 10 minutes' time or so with Senator Scott Ludlam talking about data surveillance. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for coming.